Abraham Lincoln had only a few months of formal education as a boy growing up in Kentucky and in Indiana. But he read everything he could get his hands on then, and that was a habit that he developed and a habit that served him well throughout the rest of his life. When Lincoln was running for president in 1860, he said that he regretted his lack of an education and that throughout his life, he had continued to try to address what he called his want of education. Our work in the collection at Seymour Library includes copies of books that Lincoln read, that we know that Lincoln read. Not the actual copies of the books that he read, but copies that Donna Workman was able to acquire, 19th century copies that she was able to acquire when she put the collection together back in the 1930s or 40s. Uh, several of the copies, several of the books from the Lincoln Collection are on permanent exhibit here in Old Main, which I invite you to visit whenever you can. This is a bronze copy of a life mask of Abraham Lincoln that was cast in 1860 in Chicago by a sculptor named Leonard Volk, who was a cousin, it turns out, of Stephen A. Douglas. This was given to us by Mark Zimmerman, a physician in Chicago who used it to study Lincoln's medical history. A similar life mask was made in 1865, shortly before Lincoln died, which showed a very different face. Lincoln read his favorite Shakespeare plays over and over and saw them on stage as often as he could. He liked Macbeth, a tragedy about blind ambition, political treachery, and war, most of all. Blackstone's Commentaries was a standard Anglo-American legal text of the day, a used copy of it that came to hand when Lincoln lived in New Salem, Illinois, set him off on his legal studies and the legal career that was his passport into both the middle class and into Illinois politics. The famous story about George Washington chopping down a cherry tree as a boy comes from a biography of him by Mason Weems, which, which Lincoln read as a child. Washington stood head and shoulders above all American presidents and heroes of the revolution during Lincoln's lifetime. Lincoln once said that among the lessons he took away from Washington's biographies was that there must have been something more than common that Americans fought for in their revolution. This is a copy of Euclid's Elements, a book on geometry and number theory written more than 2,000 years ago. It is probably the most widely studied textbook in the history of the world. Lincoln studied geometry and trigonometry as a young man in order to get work as a surveyor. But as a lawyer, he later read Euclid as he traveled around the Central Illinois Judicial Circuit. Every student at a college like Knox in the 19th century would have read Euclid. At a time and a place when people had few books in their homes, the Bible would be the only book that many people had, along with maybe an annual almanac. The Bible would have been one of the first books that Lincoln read and he continued to read throughout his life. He once said that without it, quote, we could not know right from wrong. Lincoln seems to have preferred the Old Testament of the King James Bible and the Book of Psalms in particular. One of the things that Lincoln liked about his job as a postmaster in New Salem, Illinois, was that he could read all the newspapers that everyone in town subscribed to. So even as an adult studying mathematics, history, and law. He kept up with current politics and events every day. So this is the Donna Workman collection. And Donna was an interesting person. She was actually an activist from Chicago, but she was also friends with Carl Sandburg, and they were both interested in Lincoln. And she also had a really strong interest in collecting books that Lincoln would have read, uh, from as a young man to a grown person, <laughs> um, and even as president. So. There's a lot of variety here, a lot of content, so I'm going to get to show a couple examples from this collection as well. So this is an example from the Workman Collection, and it's Aesop's 
fables and my favorite illustration is right here in the beginning. So if you're not familiar with Aesop's fables, um, there's different collections of stories, uh, particularly about animals. So that's why we've got this huge image of all these animals um, right here at the beginning. And some of them also had um, human features as well or human experiences. Um, one of the most well-known ones that I found while looking through this is the tortoise and the hare. Um, but originally Aesop was a Greek philosopher and he was from the 6th century and so he originally was the one that kind of created some of these stories. Um, and then this book is actually from the 1700s and so it's just really cool to think about how long these stories have continued throughout time, um, even since the 6th century, which is a really long time ago. Okay, so this is another example from the Workman collection, and I chose it because it is a completely different size from the other one we looked at, um, Aesop's Fables. And this is in particular um, a textbook um, with different things such as like the Declaration of Independence, um, the Constitution, and so this is another example of something that Lincoln might have read um, and studied as well, especially if he was going to be president. Um, but Talking about the size even is interesting because this is something that you could fit in the back pocket of your jeans. Um, this is something that a school kid or somebody could carry very easily um, and that's probably why it's very worn as well. Um, whereas the other one was a bigger book that might have been a showcase of some sort. Um, so yeah, I always like talking about the size of books um, because it tells you a lot about what use they might have had.